Dr. Ahmed Wazan is uh, Saudi Board Emergency Certified. He uh, did trauma fellowship in Canada in Toronto. He's the president of Saudi Emergency Medicine uh, Society. Uh, he's a consultant and assistant professor uh, emergency medicine in uh, National Guard Hospital in Jeddah. Uh, he will say yes for uh, permissive hypotensive. Please welcoming Dr. Ahmed Wazan. Big. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Because he's my president, you know, yeah. I know I need you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. I uh, thank Isim again for having me this year. So we'll have it um, short and sweet. My wife, she asked my six years old Rahaf daughter to get her a cup of milk. So she went to the kitchen, she brings some milk, and as she was approaching our living room, some milk spilled over. So what do you think my six years old Rahaf would refill that cup with? She went to the kitchen, she found some water, strawberry juice, and milk. What do you think? Water? Mm. Strawberry juice, and maybe if she likes it. Yeah, <laughs> I would say milk, isn't it? Because her mom asked for milk. If it's me, maybe, you know, whatever, maybe coffee. Okay, so the, the moral of this uh, issue is, if you want to have milk, you need to refill with milk, right? You don't refill with water, you don't refill with strawberry juice, you don't fill with Pepsi, isn't it? Because you need some vitamins, you need calcium, etc., etc. So the moral of this story that if you have a spilled cup of milk, then you fill it up with milk. If you have a spilled cup of water, then you put water, not milk. If you have, have a split, uh, spilled cup of water, then you have water in. So that's the idea behind this. Now, what does that have to do with permissive hypotension and trauma in ESIM 2016? Maybe. Now, the common sense sometimes is the thing that we always lack. Now, if you go back to my daughter's story, now we will know that if you use your common sense in treating your trauma patient, I'm talking trauma patient in particular, you would really understand that you don't need to do lots of things. You don't need to, to give stuff that is not really needed. Why is that? Because simply, if you give water, which is normal saline, or if we are in the old era of Ringer lactate, this is what you're going to do to your patient. You will dilute their blood, simply. It's, it's just common sense. I, did, I didn't come yet to the uh, evidence and literature. But by common sense, by logic, which my six years old would think of, you will dilute the patient blood with all the blood cells, with the coagulation factor, with the platelets, with everything that is there. So that is number one. You will be diluting that patient blood. Second thing is, these factors that is holding the platelets and the RBCs and all together will not be there. Either they're diluted or you'll be sending a message to the liver that it's okay. That patient is not hypotensive stop producing coagulation factors. So what happens with, when, when a patient goes hypotensive, the liver goes crazy, oh, some, something is going wrong. I need to get some more coagulation factor. I need to ask the hemostatic system to work. But the fact that you're giving fluid, whatever the fluid is, the liver you, uh, will say, you know what, he's okay. Just leave him. No much of you know, stuff to do. So that's, that's number two. Number three, there is a good chance that your IV fluids will be quite cold. Even, you know, whatever fluid you have, it will be cold, uh, unless you have some sort of uh, uh, a warmer in your department, but the chances of hypothermia, which is linked by evidence to increase mortality and morbidity, is there. So by common sense, again, I did not talk evidence yet. It's all common sense. You're missing up your coagulation factor. You're diluting your, your patient blood, and you may introduce hypothermia that is bad for your trauma patient in particular. So that's, in general, why I would not um, uh, put the blood pressure high. So this is my yes for the permissive hypotension. This is the common sense part of it, which my six years old Rahaf would, would do if she spilled a cup, a cup of milk. Now, if, if I went through a couple of, of, of articles, a couple of research, even guidelines, now, all of them are talking about something which is permissive hypotension. Now, the main challenge is, and we'll come to it in, in the second slide, it's not only the patient. It's the medical team. It's we. How many of you 
physicians and nurses and paramedics would feel comfortable if you just walk in a room with a patient blood pressure on the screen saying 80. The one who's comfortable, please put your hands up. There you go. One, two, okay, three. So three of that, this respectful audience, that's, a cons that's normal practice. We don't feel comfortable with low blood pressure, which is very normal. And now when we went through the literature from 1993, we started to have lots of animal studies on pigs, on rats, on different models, that they bleed pigs to death and they intervene. And they found that the more they intervene, the more fluid they give, the more chances that this pig or this rat would die. That's one. So from 1993, this has been in practice. The, the overall range of mean arterial pressure from the evidence that is a target, and I'm talking permissive hypotension, and when we're talking about permissive hypotension or permissive or hypotensive resuscitation, we're talking about controlled sitting. You don't just put the patient to, with, to a blood pressure of 70 and you just sleep on him. You need to fix him. You don't just let go with him. So the average or the desire mean arterial pressure is 50s, 50 to 60. The systolic blood pressure is 80 to 90. Now, all the literature that you will go through, different guidelines, the latest in, in, in 2016, you could see that there are differences in trauma patient versus elective surgery patients. But eventually, the bleeding is there. Both sides are there. Both sides are bleeding. But um, the fact that trauma is there, maybe there are more uncontrollable sitting. It's not like the elective surgery. But all the evidence says that the less intervention you do, the better the patient does. And this is the bottom line, no question about that. Now, this is the, the last thing, is the thing that I have mentioned a while ago, treating the team comfort level. You need to get used to that. How many of you, if, if you call a trauma team, for example, of you, or you have your resident, if you're an attending, or if you're an, a senior nurse, by the time you reach the patient, two liters already in. I think many of us have faced this at one point of time. So the t treating your own comfort level is very important. So to summarize you know, my talk, I'll just remind me with my six years old Rahaf all the time, okay? All the time, just think, common sense, go and read. You'll find a lot of literature that says, go to a systolic blood pressure from 85 to 90, mean arterial pressure 55 to 60, treat your comfort um, levels, then you will take the patient to the second, level, second uh, treatment phase, which is the uh, stopping the bleeding or intervention or damage control surgery. That's my yes. Thank you.